This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. President Biden's campaign co-chairman is in Wisconsin today and tomorrow. Mitch Landers spearheaded the president's trillion-dollar infrastructure plan. He's here to talk to local leaders about the economy. Stops include Madison, Milwaukee, Racine, La Crosse, Sheboygan, and Wausau. Wisconsin is considering letting schools start in August. Local schools like the idea, but the state's tourism industry does not. The owners of resorts, restaurants, and other businesses told a hearing yesterday they need school-age workers during the peak of the summer season. Local schools say they need more flexibility. The change still needs approval from lawmakers and the governor. Efforts to debunk election conspiracy theories in Wisconsin resume tonight in West Bend. That's where Kathy Bernier and the group Keep Our Republic will hold a seminar. If we have a successful election with no drama or accusations, that will be a success. Bernier speaking with WISN-TV's Upfront. Keep Our Republic was formed to counter doubts about the 2020 election. Political spending by anonymous donors is reaching record highs. Anna Masolia is the author of a new report by Open Secrets. She says that kind of money often pays for misleading attack ads. When you have dark money groups fueling the spending, the voter may not know what interests the secret donors behind that have. Masolia says dark money often comes from 501c4 nonprofits, which have few legal limits on how they can spend their money. Authorities in western Wisconsin are getting to the bottom of why a man from Texas died while cleaning a municipal water tank in Blair Saturday afternoon. He was wearing scuba gear but may have become hypothermic. Co-workers tried pulling him out, but he got stuck and died. Cheating on your spouse is technically a felony in Wisconsin, which can land you in jail for three months and up to $10,000 in fines. Authorities rarely pursue charges, but there's a move to take the law off the books in other states like New York. Lawmakers there say prosecutors should not dig into what consenting adults do behind closed doors. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Duluth City Council voted to reject a resolution calling for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza on Monday. It was a highly attended meeting with community members speaking passionately on both sides of the issue, with proponents saying the resolution would make them feel safer in the city and those against arguing the city has no authority to make a resolution like this. In the end, the resolution was rejected by a 5-4 vote. City councilors Forsman, Kennedy, Nephew, Swenson, and Tominek were the ones to vote against it. The Barron County Sheriff's Office has announced it received an anonymous tip about a possible threat at Prairie Farm School. According to a press release, the tip was called into the Speak Up, Speak Out Wisconsin tip line around 1.40 on Monday. Law enforcement authorities received the tip and phone data and conducted interviews, including one with the subject of the threat tip. After a thorough investigation, officials determined that the tip about a threat at the school was not true and there was no actual danger. Duluth residents have started a new internet challenge to let billionaire Kathy Cargill know they don't need her anyway. Cargill recently called the Duluth community small-minded in a Wall Street Journal report after residents and Mayor Roger Reinhart questioned her intention in buying 20 properties in Park Point. After a comment about Cheerios in the report, Duluth residents have started the Duluth Cheerio Challenge, which aims to donate as many boxes of healthy cereal as possible to local food shelves. A superior bar and apartment building have been demolished following a Thanksgiving fire that left the structures condemned. According to a Fox 21 report, demolition crews were seen taking down the former Viking Lounge and the apartments on Superior's north end on Monday. The fire that caused the damage broke out around 10 a.m. on November 23rd, and fire department officials believe it was started by a lit cigarette that was thrown into a small crawl space below the ground floor. Fourteen people were left homeless. Fire crews responded to two structure fires on Friday night. According to the Duluth Fire Department, crews received a call around 6.45 on Friday night for a dumpster fire at the Gray Bar Electronic Supply Store on West Superior Street. Crews extinguished the fire before it spread to the building, but it still caused about $10,000 in damage. About an hour later, crews were called again for a fire at an apartment building on North 10th Avenue East. Crews evacuated two residents safely and contained the fire to one unit. 
The end of Wisconsin's utility shutoff moratorium is quickly approaching. Under state law, it's illegal for utility companies to shut off heating services from November 1st to April 15th, even if customers have not been able to pay their bills. However, in a few weeks, utility companies will once again be able to shut off service for non-payment. If you're behind on your utility bills as the deadline approaches, you should contact your utility provider to begin working on a payment plan or applying for financial assistance to keep the service. The Bong Center in Superior has announced they will send experts searching for the World War II aircraft flown by their namesake. According to a Northern News Now report, Richard Bong flew the plane named after his girlfriend Marge to 20 aerial victories in World War II, but it was lost when another pilot experienced mechanical troubles while flying it and bailed out. The search will be conducted by Pacific Rex with funding from the Bong Center. The Bong Center also plans to live stream the search effort in May. A number of businesses and services were forced to close on Monday as a late winter storm rolled through the area. City of Duluth officials say bus service through the Duluth Transit Authority and Stride Paratransit were canceled for the entire day due to the conditions on the road. The Duluth and Superior YMCAs canceled a number of their programs as well as the Community Action Duluth tax site. In addition to Monday's closures, some of Second Harvest Northland's mobile food pantries will also be canceled on Tuesday. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Bucks and the Lakers. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Milwaukee Bucks host the LA Lakers tonight at 5 Sir Forum. The Bucks' Bobby Portis asked, what's it like to finally have Chris Middleton back? It's fun to have a whole team, fun to, you know, build it these last 11, 10 games and, you know, try to turn in the right direction, man. It's that time of year now and it's exciting. LeBron James not expected to play due to a sore ankle. I asked the Bucks' Damian Lillard, who does he expect to guard him tonight? We talked about it, um, but I never really worry about it too much when since I've been on this team because we got so many weapons. I know that I can play the game honest in the right way and we'll have a, a chance to win regardless. College basketball, the Badgers women's team with a 67-62 victory over Southern Indiana in the WNIT. They'll host Illinois State Thursday night. Baseball, the Brewers wrapping up spring training with a game against the Rockies before heading to New York for the season opener Thursday against the Mets. What kind of a team should fans expect this year? Manager Pat Murphy. We're going to play hard, that's for sure. Super bunch of guys that I think the fans will fall in love with and, and compete. And be careful because they might just believe themselves right into contention. The Brewers have some injury concerns. Outfielder Garrett Mitchell will be out the next four to six weeks or longer with a fractured left hand suffered in batting practice over the weekend. And a report from baseball insider John Heyman says that Jackson Churio will need tending to his elbow nearly every day following an injury he suffered as a 12-year-old in a Venezuelan youth league. NFL Packers GM Brian Gutekunst says he has no problem signing Jordan Love to a contract extension sometime soon. Um, certainly having four years with him, I think, gives us a lot of comfort um, what he's all about and, and how you know his teammates look at him and the organization looks at him. That's the Packers' Brian Gutekunst with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Moviegoers overwhelmingly said they weren't afraid of no ghosts. Despite a far-from-fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, Ghostbusters' Frozen Empire dominated the weekend box office, bringing in $45 million bucks. Dune 2 took second place for the second week in a row. Immaculate came in fourth place with a disappointing 5 million big ones. That could have been due in part to thinking audiences would buy Sidney Sweeney as a nun. Life and Style Mag claims Kelsey spent over $8 million of his $14 million salary, or almost 20% of his net worth, trying to woo Swift. The funds were spent on jewelry, traveling, and expensive clothes. In a related story, it's just been announced that Travis Kelsey signed an extension on his contract that will keep him a Kansas City chief until he is 72. Little House and the Prairie fans will love this. Melissa Gilbert said in a recent interview that instead of accepting payment for hosting the Rose Bowl Parade, show creator and co-star Michael Landon would use that money to buy gifts for the cast of his show. While reminiscing about Little House as the show's 50th anniversary nears, Gilbert talked about her special bond with Landon since her own father passed away when she was 11. Michael Landon died in 1991 at the age of 54 from cancer. Pamela Anderson's former husband and co-star of the stolen Pam and Tommy home video, Tommy Lee, apparently flipped out over seeing her kiss another guy on the set of Baywatch. Do you believe on a show where people are totally hot and barely wearing clothes at all, they wrote a kiss into a scene? Eh, you'd think he might have seen that coming. Instead, he trashed her trailer. That Tommy Lee is incorrigible. One of Pete's picks is Knox Goes Away, which is in theaters. If you like Michael Keaton and a nice film noir, i definitely say check it out. Reviews were mostly favorable. The film does not move quickly, instead taking its time, which totally worked, as the plot progressed well and escalated, even throwing in a few subtle twists. 
Actor 4 E.J. Smith, who dresses up as a cowboy on Yellowstone, was thrown off a flight for refusing to sit next to a person wearing a mask. That's right, he disapproved of behavior that actually didn't affect but did protect him on a flying Petri dish. Smith, who plays Lloyd Pierce on the show, is a fierce anti-vax proponent and sat out the SAG Awards in 2022 due to their vaccine policy for attendees. The actor apparently did not have a problem showing up on the set where vaccines and COVID tests were enforced regularly throughout the pandemic. The lesson? Do not compromise your principles unless there's money involved. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Rain will change back to snow this morning with off and on snow here through the afternoon. We may get another inch or so of accumulation by the time it all winds down this evening. Temperatures mid-30s this morning, dropping into the mid-20s later today. The wind west gusting to 25 or 30. Tonight, 16. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a high of 31. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 32. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.